you probably should not use Cacturn competitively. It's got base 115 offenses, which is kind of nice, but it's extremely slow and dies if you breathe on it wrong. However, its water absorbability can open up switch ins to water moves and try to get some opportunity to boost up with Swords Dance. Its abysmal speed doesn't matter when you're able to just bop stuff with plus two sucker punches thanks to its dark typing and maybe throw some stab seed bombs and stuff. The hidden tech is actually Fell Stinger. If you're able to grab a knockout with this, it immediately gives you plus three attack, which is nuts. And it's really hard to do. But I think Cacturn's a cool dude, and I'm gonna try to get this fella to pop off. So I get asked almost never, Hayden, when are you gonna use Cacturn? It's my favorite Pokemon, and this thing is amazing. Well, person who's never asked that before ever, you are in luck, because today we're gonna try to make Cacturn amazing. This thing, don't give me, it is bad, but it's a fun challenge, and that's what I'm into. If you're into that kind of thing as well, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I'm over here uploading multiple times a week trying to make fun stuff, and uh, let's go ahead and jump into the match. All right, so my opponent in the suite of sunglasses ever is gonna lead off with the Haxorus, and this thing is scary. Luckily, however, I have a skinny lizard who does have the power of Ice Beam, Except, a lot of the time when you see something like a Haxorus lead, I'm almost expecting this thing to, like, Terra and then go for a Dragon Dance. And Dragon Dance would be really bad for me to start off, so I decide I'm gonna go for the Taunt. Instead, they actually end up switching into the Rotom Wash, the damn bane of my existence. And we do not, we, I don't wear, I'm a lizard that doesn't wear clothes. I have no use for the washing machine, except I can go for the Taunt, and that makes it nice, because now this thing has to go for something like... A Hydro Pump or a Volt Switch. So, I have the benefit of going for the flip turn here. And this matchup is pretty interesting because they can't really go for a Volt Switch because I have the threat of the Jolteon here. But if I'm them, I probably just click it anyway. A Hydro Pump doesn't do anything to Inteleon. Uh, but I just decide to go into the Jolteon. They do, in fact, go for the Hydro Pump. And the best thing about Rotom Wash is that it's only water coverage is going to come in the form of Hydro Pump, and that should be missing all the time. So it does miss, which is amazing, and at this point, I can go for a pivot with a Volt Switch of my own, except I know they have this big rocky bastard over there, which is going to be the Rhyperior. I decide to go for the middle ground play, which is going to be the Shadow Ball. It's With the choice specs, going to hit pretty hard on the Rhyperior there on the special side, and uh, it's not quite going to be enough for a two-hit KO. But I grabbed some chip, Jolteon did what it needed to do, and at this point, I'm feeling like this Rhyperior is likely going to set up Stealth Rock. That's at least what I would do in this situation. So I'm going to take this time to go ahead and switch right back into Skinny. I'm going to go into the Inteleon here because it does threaten their team relatively nicely. I also know that I cover for an Earthquake if that's what they want to go for. It is going to go for that Earthquake as Inteleon takes a whole bunch of damage. It's mostly fine. This thing is kind of just here to be fast and get sniper crits, so I mean, it's mostly fine. And at this point, surely this Rhyperior is not going to stay in unless they want to go for a Terra, which I'm actually just going to go for the flip turn because surely they're going to go right back into that Rotom. And without Stealth Rock, we're getting some real unpunished switches out here, and I figure I should probably try to make something happen here. So as the Rotom comes in, one interesting thing about Rotom always is that we don't know what kind of set this is going to be. We know it's not Choice Scarf because I do still outspeed with the Inteleon uh, in an earlier turn. Uh, but at this point, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go into the Cleaver here. I, I figure while I am vulnerable to a Hydro Pump, I, I also, you got to hit the Hydro Pump. And I really want to get my Stealth Rock up here, kind of bluff a little bit of a Terra action. I'm able to go for that Stone Axe. It does set up the Stealth Rock with a nice little amount of damage there. And it turns out they're actually going to go for the Volt Switch. So they likely expected uh, Cleaver to come in and probably Terra and then they want to pivot out of there. So that's perfect. Cleaver... Definitely would have died to a Hydro Pump, so kind of a dumb move, but looking at the matchup, I was like, you know what, Cleaver is not extremely useful, so that's fine. So, we've got the Stealth Rock up and a good amount of chip to their biggest defensive switch in, which is that Rotom. So, uh, they take the opportunity now to bring in the Rhyperior, who obviously scares the shit out of Cleaver, as I cannot go for a Stone Axe here, being Choice Scarfed. And I'm going to take this opportunity to go ahead and hard switch into the Pickle. The absolute legend Pickle Rick comes in here, and I'm expecting fully them to go for the Stealth Rock of their own, which is perfect, because now Cacturn comes in uh, essentially for free on the Stealth Rock turn. And now it's time to see if we can get this bad boy going. We are prickly, it's, the sun is out, the guns are out, and we're ready to have ourselves a time. So... At this point, Rhyperior probably doesn't stay in here, so it's going to put me in a spot where I can grab a free Swords Dance, and we can essentially make this Cactus sharper than ever. So, they're going to go ahead and switch into the Rotom, likely just as a uh, as a sack switch here. It comes in, as it takes the Stealth Rock damage, doesn't quite die, but they're probably just expecting something like the Seed Bomb to knock it out, 
and then they can get a better switch in. But instead, I go ahead and dance with my swords, and uh, every crow within a 12 mile radius of this place is scared as hell. So they actually end up going for the Thunderbolt as their only method of damage here. I really expected something like a Will-O-Wisp, but I'm able to capitalize on this opportunity and finish it off with the Fell Stinger. And not only does it take it out, but also is gonna give us a drastic raise to our physical attack, which is gonna now, it brings us up to plus five. And now, this is truly the scariest cack turn of, of all time. I honestly was kind of expecting that thing to go for potentially a trick. A will-o-wisp would have been bad, but honestly at plus five I was willing to take it anyway. But we are now the hardest hitting damn cack turn in the region, and they take this opportunity to bring in the Weavile. So here's the thing. A lot of the time what this cack turn is supposed to do is get a whole bunch of physical attack and sucker punch things. What does not work, however, is if they have the priority. And of course, if I'm them, I bring in Weavile, I threaten with the Ice Shard and just knock out my grass type ass. So I'm gonna take this opportunity instead of going for the Sucker Punch, I'm actually going to tear a bug. That's gonna allow me to take like 25% from an Ice Shard and I do not wanna misplay with the Sucker Punch. So they do go for that Ice Shard. I'm able to just barely hang on and then I can actually go for another Fell Stinger. At plus five and boosted by Terra, absolutely destroy the Weavile. And also, it is going to give me another drastic boost, but it's just going to put me at plus one. Because now we are at plus six attack with the Cacturn, and I'm going where no Cacturn has gone before, for real. So, uh, I do have a couple turns left of Life Orb Recoil in me. I, at this point, I'm not really needing a Life Orb, because, again, we have damage for days out here. And uh, they decide to go into Chandelure. So, Chandelure doesn't have any real options other than just going for attacks here. So, I can freely click the Sucker Punch and pop his Balloon and pop his head like a damn watermelon to <laughs> take care of it. Um, and uh, Cacturn's going on a little mini rampage out here, and honestly, we love to see it. So, with that thing taken care of, they really don't have any other priority, and it's like something's gonna have to take a Sucker Punch and die, or, if you're Rhyperior, take some seeds to the face, and then also die. So, I can actually just outspeed, which is something this Cacturn has never done before, and finish off the Rhyperior uh, which is absolutely amazing. Now, the saddest part is the Life Orb is going to take care of me. I, I knocked myself out, but honestly, that's the best way to go if you're a Cacturn. I did what I needed to do, and we are out of here. So, as Cacturn did pop off, we do still have our work cut out for us. Because, you know, while I still have a respectable squad left, they do have arguably their scariest Pokemon in the back. Which is going to be both the Haxorus and the Iron Crown. So, I decided to go into Inteleon, who... Uh, can outspeed both unless Iron Crown is booster energy speed. They do decide to bring in a robotic ass Cobalion, and it is going to be the uh, the Quark Drive boosted by the booster energy, and it does get the speed boost. So this is bad. This thing can definitely now outspeed me and knock me out. Plus, Inteleon's kind of stuck in here, and at this point, I need to go for a snipe shot, and that is because I want to cover for setup, as they do actually go for a calm mind. Gonna boost both the special attack and special defense, but the reason why we run Inteleon with the scope lens and its sniper ability is because Snipeshot is able to grab crits a lot of the time. We could ignore the special defense boost and it doesn't quite knock it out, which is unfortunate, but we did so much damage to the point where now I'm like, okay, we are not gonna get swept by the Iron Crown and honestly, that crit was extremely clutch. So as they finish me off, that is mostly fine because Inteleon did what it needed to do there. And at this point now, I can go into the Arcanine, who does have priority with the extreme speed. And I'm like, thank God I can now, it's in range for the extreme speed to knock it out. So, uh, of course, I'm just going to go for that priority. Iron Crown doesn't have much to do, and I can finish it off. So, that thing is extremely scary and out of the way. But their final Pokemon, being the Haxorus, is still extremely scary. And the game is far from over at this point. So... As I get some leftover recovery, which is pretty nice, we're feeling pretty healthy at this point. I, the Haxorus is going to come in, and uh, I'm really feeling like, okay, I, what I need to happen here is them to go for a Dragon Dance. I can then land a Will-O-Wisp, and then Profit. Also, I'm max HP and attack, so I'm thinking I should be able to live in Earthquake here. They're going to go for the Earthquake, and it actually is barely enough to knock me out. And that leads me to believe that this is going to be an adamant Haxorus. If it's Jolly and plus speed nature, that is a very close call on whether that kills. Um, and at this point, here is the plan. So, I'm down to three Mons left, but Scarf Cleaver has an opportunity uh, to two-hit KO this thing. So, first of all, this is what I'm thinking. I bring in the Cleaver here, who, hey, while I know the X-Scissor isn't quite going to be able to one-hit KO it, it's definitely going to be a two-hit KO. 
And if I'm them in this situation, I go for the Dragon Dance. Now, the reason why Scarf Cleaver is clutch here is because I, even at plus one, if it's an adamant Haxorus, me with Choice Scarf, I actually outspeed by like two or three points. So they're actually going to go ahead and commit the Terra that I've kind of forgotten that they haven't used at this point. And it is going to be the Terra Steel, which really makes me regret not clicking close combat. But I go for the X-Scissor, and it's no longer going to be that two-hit KO, and they can go for the Dragon Dance. So this thing with the axe on his head, scariest damn looking Mon in the game. And I have been bamboozled by the Terra. So at this point, I cannot switch Cleaver out. We still have the opportunity to outspeed being Scarf if it's adamant, and uh, I really am kind of out of options at this point. So I just go for the X-Scissor. It turns out it does outspeed. It is going to be Jolly with the Dragon Dance, and Earthquake is able to take care of me. And uh, surely I should have clicked the close combat there. That is extreme hindsight and would have been extremely satisfying, but it is what it is. So now at this point, I'm down to two mons left. This thing is faster than my entire team. And at plus one attack, it is uh, quite scary. It has coverage on both of these fellas. I can bring in the Drag Algae and be like, hey, I know you're a special defensive guy, but go ahead and uh, live an Earthquake for me so I can focus blast and be satisfying. Turns out they're going to go for that Earthquake. And yeah, that does take care of the Drag Algae. So the late game Terra, when, literally whenever there's a Haxorus or a Mon with the potential to Dragon Dance in the back, uh, you're, you're gonna have a bad time. <laughs> My final Mon is gonna be the Jolteon. And uh, while Jolteon do be quick as hell, we are not gonna be able to outspeed a Jolly plus one. And an Earthquake is sadly gonna be able to finish me off. So honestly, the turnaround in that match was absolutely insane, extremely well played. And while we are gonna fall to this one, sometimes that is truly just the way it goes. It does happen. And uh, I definitely misplayed. Honestly, will o -Wisp landing with the Arcanine there would have been a game-changing situation, but that's the way it goes. I love when games are super close like that, in that like if there wasn't Stealth Rock on my side, Arcanine would have had just enough HP to live in Earthquake and then get the will o -Wisp off. Um, but uh, still, regardless, super fun match. And with that, we're going to go ahead and jump into the next one, because listen, we are not done out here. So in this one, we have an extremely scary team we're going up against. Strong defensive core with the Aloma Mola, which is annoying as hell, along with Gliscor, and then there's just like some of the biggest offensive threats freaking ever. So I have a Cacturn in a dream, and let's go ahead and jump into it. So this time, they're actually going to go ahead and lead off with the Asshole Fish that does not evolve from Love Disc, which still pisses me off, but they probably expect something like the Cleaver lead. Instead, they're met with Skinny Lizard, and uh, I don't really have much to do here, but also... I don't want any shenanigans out here. I'm gonna go for another turn one taunt, ensure that this thing doesn't get up to any nonsense. And it's likely just gonna go for the flip turn. It does go for that pivot, uh, which obviously doesn't do a whole lot, and that's uh, mostly fine. And we get to see what they, where its kind of answer is. On a switch in here, and Inteleon still is uh, in a pretty decent spot. However, we are not faster than crazy ass Robot Delibird, and Iron Bundle is a very scary mod, especially for this team. My only special sponge is going to come in the form of the Drag Algae. Now, I'm Assault Vested and I know that I can take a Freeze Dry here, except this Christmas son of a bitch is going to hit extremely hard even through that. So, the Assault Vest saves us a little bit of trauma, and at this point, I'm just going to go for a Draco Meteor. It's going to do a lot to whatever if they want to switch. Turns out they're actually just going to stay in, and of course I can live the Freeze Dry, and then miss the, the Draco Meteor. So, essentially completely lose my only check to the Iron Bundle, and... We gotta love those 10% miss chances coming in situations where, hey, that would have been really clutch if that just would have connected. So they actually now, expecting a switch likely, go for the flip turn. And I'm able to actually even live through a crit. And that's pretty great because now Drag Algae gets a second chance at landing a Draco Meteor. And they're actually just gonna switch right back into the Aloma Mola. So I'm able to do around half to this thing. And uh, honestly, getting damage on this feels bittersweet every time because you know this thing's just gonna wish or switch out and get Regenerator. And he's going to live above half health the entire match. But they're actually going to go for that priority with the Aqua Jet. Does take care of the Drag Algae. So it didn't get a whole lot of value out of this dude. But at least I opened the door to a spot where, hey, you know, Cacturn can actually switch in here pretty nicely. Now, the only thing they could have is something like an Ice Beam. But I'm going to take this opportunity to go for that Swords Dance and see if we can make this boy sharp. So they're actually going to end up switching out the Alomomola. And in comes the Ogre Pond Hearth Flame. So... I do not have Stealth Rock up, which would have been really nice chip damage, but after a Swords Dance, as I'm looking at it, a Sucker Punch has a solid chance to kill this thing from full, which is honestly pretty wild. 
For reference, at plus two, if this Ogre Pond doesn't have like HP or defense investment, which most of the time they don't, I'm able to do a minimum of 116%. So I'm like, hey, this is this is Cacturn's time to shine out here. One of the scariest mods in the game is now even scarier because they're going to go full mega form on my ass, make the mask huge, get that embody aspect, which now gives it a plus one in attack. So this thing is quick and just bust my ass with the IV cudgel, except for the fact that I have the sucker punch, uh, which does connect and that just straight up takes care of buddy. And I guarantee you they did not expect that damage out of the cacturn. So that's extremely clutch. Honestly, didn't really expect it to be able to knock out the ogre pond, but it does. And that's amazing. So cacturn takes care of not only the, one of the scarier mons, but also uses up their Terra, which could not be better. So, at this point, now they go into another scary asshole, which is going to be the Urshifu. So, at this point, I'm to, I've been kind of experimenting with different Terras uh, on the Cacturn here. I decide I'm going to go for the Ferriteri. Fer Fairy Terra. Ferriteri. Hello? <laughs> I go for the Terra Fairy, which is going to allow me to definitely take whatever fighting move this thing wants to throw at me. Of course, they do outspeed. Go for the close combat, but punches me right in the heart, which for whatever reason doesn't hurt as much. And uh, that is amazing because, especially with the defense drop, now your ass is about to get seed bomb, boy. And that does take care of the Urshifu. So that's honestly wild. I was able to knock out two of the mons that I was kind of most worried about. And uh, we are in a pretty decent spot here. So now they get a free switch and they're like, okay, the hell do I bring in here? This Cacturn is a damn menace. And they decide to go into the Gliscor, who does have the opportunity to go for a Protect, but I'm like, you know what, if I'm them, I just attack here, I'm gonna go for the Sucker Punch, which almost knocks this thing out, uh, but unfortunately for us, the Gliscor is just too damn defensive, does finish me with the Earthquake, but honestly, the value we got out of Cacturn here, taking care of those two huge threats, and not only that, but also just putting this Gliscor into easy killable range, is some pretty solid stuff. Now I'm thinking there's kind of an opportunity for me to go into the Crocodile and try to get some little, little moxie snowball action going. So, the plan is this. I go into the Crocodile and I can knock the rest of this thing's HP out with a Scale Shot, which not only gives me a speed boost from that Scale Shot, but then also I get the plus one attack with the moxie. And then at that point, my biggest threat defensively is going to be the Aloma Mola, who likely can't one-hit KO me. So, they actually end up going for the Protect because big meaty claws over here is just annoying and just slowing things down, get some poison heal, doing some Gliscor nonsense, but it's mostly fine. It's still in range to where a scale shot would kill, and I really need the Moxie to help me out here. But they're going to realize what the situation is here after seeing the scale shot, and they're just going to go right into freaking Aloma Mola, who is, of course, looking as healthy as ever. Now, I go for that scale shot and actually miss, which is... I honestly forget that that move can miss sometimes, so you, you love to see it. But, uh... I don't have a whole lot to do to this thing, but what I figure one thing that can help me out is just going for a knockoff. I actually get rid of this thing's assault vest, which is going to make it a whole lot easier to take care of on the special side, and I got some solid chip there. But uh, as they go for the Scald, it's actually not even a two-hit KO. So what I'm going to do is, thinking that Earthquake might be a two-hit KO here, I am going to roll the chance that they don't get another Scald burn, but of course they do, because that's just the story of my life, which is uh, unfortunate because now Crocodile's kind of used up at this point. I'm not going to be able to get uh, the scale shot shenanigans that I was looking for. And of course, they also have the priority with the Aqua Jet, and I just let them take care of the Crocodile. I probably could have opted for a switch there, however, hey, it's mostly fine. Crook wasn't really going to do a whole lot, but now at least that's going to open up the opportunity to go into Mimikyu, who... Looks like I have a nice little chance just to knock this thing out with a Shadow Claw or a Play Rough. Now, I don't want to Swords Dance just because of that chance with the Scald Burn. I know it's going to freaking burn me, and I ain't playing that. So I go for the Shadow Claw here. It literally does not kill. This is why we absolutely hate Aloma Mola. It can now finish me off with the Flip Turn, and I probably should have gone Play Rough, but I'm like now afraid of missing stuff. And that is unfortunate. So it does knock out my Disguise and also activates Red Card which is kind of unfortunate, but it does at least draw in a random switch in, as it's now going to bring in the Gliscor. So, this thing gets a free turn of Poison Heal, and this thing's looking slowly crawling its way back to being healthy, and surely I can go ahead and call the Protect here. They're definitely going to go for a Protect, so I'm going to go ahead and try to capitalize here and go for that Swords Dance, and now Mimikyu is in a way better spot. This is kind of a double Swords Dance team, and whether you like it or not, there's going to be some Swords around here. So... 
Uh, at plus two attack, it's looking like I can have a chance, depending on what kind of Gliscor this thing is. Uh, I am just going to go for the play rough here for my highest damage. I am able to outspeed, and it does knock out the Gliscor, which is always the best sight to see that thing freaking dying. So... At this point, now they get a revenge switch of their choice. They decide to go into the bundle, and this thing is still very scary. And also, I know that I have a chance to take a Hydro Pump. There's a very, pretty good chance, actually. It goes for that Hydro Pump as long as it wasn't choice specs. We live, barely hang on with 11 HP, as the play rough does not quite knock it out. But I can then finish it with the Shadow Sneak. So, taking care of the bundle is uh, going to open up the late game for me amazingly, because that thing is fast. And extremely scary and uh, that's gonna take care of it so now they decide to go into the Latias here now I'm thinking Latias uh, I should definitely just click shadow sneak it's not gonna quite kill high chance that it doesn't kill but I have nothing else to really do at this point it's gonna be faster I'm able to knock it down to red and they opt to go for the future site now that tells me they either predicted something like a switch or they don't have uh, any greater coverage so honestly I'm fine with the future site we're gonna deal with that damage later baby because we are living in the damn present out here and uh, I decided to go for another shadow sneak here I probably should have expected the switch into the Loma Lola and then just gone for something like the shadow claw but uh, that's totally fine I actually make a misplay there don't go for the second shadow sneak I decided to go for shadow claw and uh, that actually was stupid because now I just died of the aqua jet and uh, I saw that thing Aqua Jet multiple damn times, but it, it's fine. The biggest thing is that the Latias took so much damage to where now Inteleon being able to outspeed should be able to win me the game if I can take care of this stupid fish. Now, sadly, it comes down to me using a freaking camera up against it, but with my ability, I'm able to hang on from an Aqua Jet and then finish it off with an Earth Power. So Solid Rock reducing the super effective damage allows us to take the not super strong Aqua Jet. And look at Camera Up, just out here living water attacks like Humphrey's never done before, with green health, mind you. So their final Pokemon is gonna be that Latias. Really wish that I would have Stealth Rocks up at this point, but Camera Up was kind of my only guy to do that, and he didn't get a chance. So uh, at this point, as long as this thing is not Choice Scarf, I should be in a good spot, even better is that they go for the Draco Meteor to finish off the camera up. So while this thing goes down, it is going to allow me to bring back in Lizard and Inteleon is going to do some sniping out here. We are zooming in and all I need to do is bust his ass with an Ice Beam and Inteleon is naturally faster. So I can outspeed, the Ice Beam is going to take care of it and that, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be the end of the match. So honestly, that was a super close game. Also, Sniper grabbed the crit there just in case that mattered, but... Yeah, thank you guys very much for watching. This has been kind of an interesting team to mess around with, and uh, hopefully you guys did enjoy. If you did, make sure to leave a like on the video. It really does help out the channel, and I will catch you guys next time. Peace out.